As you may know, I'm teaching myself to paint portraits and figures in watercolour. It's not easy, so I thought a good exercise would be to take colour out of the equation and focus on tonal values, edges and shapes. I painted this monochromatic profile recently and in this video I'll share some of my learning with you. I didn't start painting until I was in my 30s. Prior to that I worked solely in graphite pencil and my favourite subject to draw was the human figure. All those years I spent drawing was time well spent because I learned to see the relationships between lights and darks and it made it easy for me to perceive colour as value. The value of a colour is how light or how dark it is in relation to the different values that surround it. Understanding the darkness and lightness of shapes in your painting is more important than the colour that you use. So with that in mind, I decided to do a practice painting of a face in one colour. I felt that there was enough to think about without trying to work out all the different skin tone variations. When I paint a portrait, I have to think about value, colour, shape and edges. So I figured toss out colour and that's one less thing that I have to worry about. I can then focus on my edges, my tonal values and my shapes. Once I feel confident with all of those, then I can try to add some different coloured skin tones to my portraits. I painted this pink version first and then I painted and filmed this second version that I painted in Windsor Green. This is the reference photo that I used. It was taken by Alexander Kravitsky and I downloaded it from Unsplash website. This is a piece of Fabriano Artistico cold pressed watercolour paper. The first thing I did was paint a layer of water all over the paper. When that was done, I got out some Windsor Green. You don't need to use Windsor Green, you could use any colour. Payne's Grey would be a good choice. I'm only using Windsor Green because I don't use it very often and I want to try and use it up. So I took the Windsor Green and I painted a light layer all over the top of the face, over the top of everything. The water all over the paper will keep the edges on the perimeter of the face soft and that will eliminate any dark or hard edges forming where I don't want them. When the first layer had dried, I painted some water over the top of the nose and then I started to paint in a shadow that I could see on the tip of the nose. I knew that it was important to work from broad to specific, so I looked for the larger shadow areas and I started to paint them in first. I've got the paint there, now I've taken the paint out of my brush and I'm using my brush to move the paint around and to soften paint edges further. Then I moved up to the shadow that sits in front of the eye and I wet the paper there. Okay, I've got my paint and I'll run it against the edge of the eye. That's where I want my hard edge and in front of the eyelid as well. The paint bleeds with the water on the paper. So all I'm concerned about at the moment is getting in the front edge of that eye. And I can push the paint out to form the shadow that's there. I just get it in roughly the same area that I see it on the reference photo. There's a little shadow that comes underneath the eye. So I'll paint that on now keeping my paint within the water. Just got to make sure I get the shape of the eye right. Those eyelashes are in the way there too. It's hard to see the way it goes, but I think that's right. I moved down to the chin and the neck then, and I started to paint in the broad shadows that I could see there. 
I kept them fairly pale. I knew that I could darken them if I needed to later on. I worked on the wet paper again to keep all my paint edges soft. This is how my painting looked after I painted in those initial broad shadows that I saw. There was also a subtle shadow on the cheek that I knew I needed to paint on in order to depict the form of the face correctly. So I did this on the wet paper as well. I've put the paint on there. Now I've taken the paint out of my brush and I can soften the paint edges and move the paint where I want it. I got my other brush out and I gently rubbed it over the surface to feather the paint out. After I painted all those shadows in, I turned my attention to the eye itself. I wet the eye with some water and I started to paint on the iris. I wet the area above the eye and I started to form the eyebrow. I'm wetting the paper all the time because I want soft edges on everything. There was another broad shadow that I noticed that I hadn't painted in yet. So I wet the paper again and I started to establish that shadow that went around the eye. I dried that off, re-wet the paper and started to paint in the creases that form the eyelid. I could see that I needed to darken the shadow in front of the eye, so I wet the paper there again and started to paint some darker paint on there. Now I've taken the paint out of my brush and I'm using it to feather the paint down a bit and soften the paint edges further. Now the white of the eye here is too white, so I need a bit of colour on that. So I've wet it with water and then I'll put some paint there. That's where the eyelashes will sit. I re-wet the area where the eyebrow is and I darkened that. I tentatively started to paint in the eyelashes. I knew this was an area that I could mess up if I wasn't careful. It's important to paint what it is I see. I know these are eyelashes. I know they're individual hairs, but that's not what I see. I see clumps. I see shapes. I see light areas and dark areas, but I don't see too many individual hairs. I work on wet paper here to try and keep all the edges soft. I don't really want any hard lines here. As the paper starts to become less wet, I can come back with some more paint and create some darker areas. So the paper's not as wet as it was. It's still wet, but it's not as wet as it was when I started. So I'm just painting in a few darker areas. Back down to the nose now, I want to paint in the nostril. The top edge of the nostril is a hard edge, but the bottom edge is soft. So I've wet right up to the top edge of the nostril and below, I've wet it further. So I paint the paint on to the top edge of the water. That gives me that hard line there. And then I can pull it down the softer edge. Now I'll take the paint out of my brush and smooth that away. And while it's still wet I'll come back with some darker pigment 
and deepen the colour on the nostril. Just pushing the paint out a little bit further. And then I'll probably need to darken that nostril again. When that area was dry, I re-wet the area above the nostril with some water. There's a shadow there that I need to increase. I need to make it larger. I also need to paint in the side of the nose beside the nostril where it's round. I've got a small amount of paint on my brush. It's fairly dark and I start to paint in that shadow on the wet paper. A little bit of paint goes a long way on the wet paper. Now I'll take the paint out of my brush and I'll use it to soften that paint edge, spread it out a bit, feather it away. Just tease the paint where I want it. And that brings in the curve of the nose or the curve of the side of the nose. You can use my brush as a sponge to take some paint off if I think I've pushed it too far. I don't want a hard edge here so very gently I can use my damp brush to soften away that hard edge. I painted in the mouth and then I started to darken the shadows on the neck. All of this again on wet paper. Sweep it up the jawline. And back down again to form that angular shadow there. I painted the hair on wet paper as well. I layered it a few times, started light, and then I slowly got darker. With each layer, I wet the paper. Then I went back in and darkened some of the shadows even further. Until eventually, I was happy with it. And there's my two monochrome studies side by side. By doing these monochrome paintings, I learned how important it is to really look hard at edges, shapes, lights and shadows when I paint the human face. If I paint the edges and shapes not quite right on the petals of a flower, or if I get the shape of some feathers not quite right on a bird, it's no big deal. Getting the edges and shapes not quite right on a human face, that's a different story. I also feel that it's important to build up the shadow areas slowly, start light and go darker gradually. I will keep practicing, I'll keep doing my studies and I'll keep sharing what I learn and how I learn. I will publish the full length version of this tutorial on my Patreon site in a few weeks. I don't skip over anything in those tutorials. You get to see me make mistakes and I talk about what I'm thinking as I paint and I walk you through the painting from start to finish. I've been working really hard over the past year or so and I now have over 70 full length watercolour tutorials on my Patreon site for you to work your way through. So whether you're a beginner or a more experienced painter, there's plenty of tutorials for you to learn from. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And I will see you next week with another watercolour tutorial. 
So I thought a good exercise would be to take colour out of the equation and focus on tonal <coughs> tonal <coughs> tonal values colour out of the equation and focus on tonal values sorry there's a bird watching me through the window hi little fella prior to that I worked solely in graphite pencil and my favourite subjects to draw and lightness of shapes in your painting um, 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 here comes the rain just in time As you may know, I'm teaching myself to paint portraits and figures in watercolour. And it's raining really loudly on the roof, so you may not be able to hear me. There we go. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and please subscribe because I will see you. No. No. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel because I post. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel. I will see you next week with a new watercolour tutorial.